You're here because you want to break through and scale whatever it is that you're doing. Probably a business, but it could be anything that involves customers, fans, investors, anything where you have to rally a lot of people. Now, the fact is we know that over 99% of businesses fail to ever accomplish this. Now, why is that? Typically, businesses are started by very smart people. That is why I wrote The Art of Rallying the Crowd. Now, my name is Dak, and why would you care about this? Because I know that most people that are out there writing a book, they like walked across Kathmandu with a canoe strapped to their back, and then they're like, here's my story, I wrote it, and they just want to be an author. They just want you to read it. Why does this have any value to you? Well, I went to Stanford University. I got a master's and bachelor's degree from Stanford. And then ever since then, I have been an entrepreneur. I've never held a full-time job. I used to do well over seven figures. And then I decided that I wanted to scrap that business and start a much more scalable business and go much bigger than that. Now, you have to keep in mind, I went to Stanford and I was personal friends, housemates. We lived in the same house for two years together with Kevin Systrom, the founder of Instagram, with Rainer Castillo, one of the co-founders of Chubby Shorts, which is one of the fastest growing companies over the last 10 years in the clothing industry, with Jake Fuentes, who founded Level Money, which was the biggest competitor to Mint, and he's not allowed to say, but I believe they sold it for about $50 million to Capital One. Outside of our house, my friends were people like Lisa Falzone, who, sounded, who founded Revel Systems, and they sold for $100 million. Now, these are my close personal friends. When I got stuck trying to start a new business and scale it, I would call them up and ask them whatever questions that I had. I would test everything. I spent over half a million dollars in advertising just testing how to break through and scale. Read every book, tried everything. And for over three years, three years, guys, I woke up every single day, worked from the time I woke up to the time I went to sleep, and we could not break through for over three years and find any way to scale the new business while removing things like phone calls that were a part of acquiring customers in my previous business. Because as soon as you have to get on the phone, for every customer you ever acquire, you cannot scale. So, we were completely stuck. And I promise you, when you do that, it is absolute hell. And then, I started to take everything that I'd learned from those incredible entrepreneurs, everything that we'd learned through testing, everything that we'd learned from all these incredible books, and we started to look at what were the businesses that were out there succeeding doing. We looked at Starbucks, Google, Facebook, Apple. We looked at personal trainers like Brandon Carter, who's a friend of a friend, what were they doing? We even looked at the Beatles, Michael Jackson, Lady Gaga, sports figures like Michael Jordan and Conor McGregor. And we started to see that they were all basically doing the same thing. And there were elements of that that we were not doing and that was stopping us from scaling. And when we figured that out and tried those elements, we broke through ourselves. And that is what the art of rallying the crowd is about. And that is why it is valuable to you. Yo, Gary V, what's up, man? Hey, I got a question. How do I break through and scale my business? I've been trying everything. Well, first you gotta eat a lot of blueberries. I eat blueberries like it's my job. It saves so much time. All you mothers out there, you're just wasting so much time eating. Okay, that's great, but beside the blueberries, then what should I do? Okay, so you're gonna make content for the next three years and you're gonna put it on TikTok. See, everybody's on TikTok, it's all about the attention. And you just keep putting it up there and keep making content and then people are gonna love it, it's gonna scale. Eventually you're gonna do something that hits and it's just gonna scale, man, content. It's about the content. Just don't buy the New York Jets, because that's for me. Don't buy the New York Jets. It's my thing. Content.
Isn't that kind of just guessing? It is. So, just like me, your time is incredibly valuable. So I want to jump straight into what we found all of these companies, organizations, entertainers, figures were all doing that was the same across all of them that allowed them to break through and then allowed us to break through. So first off, I know you're just meeting me for the first time. The fact that I went to Stanford probably makes me at least a little more trustworthy than a lot of people. The fact that I'm bringing you information from people like Kevin Systrom, the founder of Instagram, probably also makes me a little more trustworthy. But let me say that this is not about what we invented, it is about what we discovered and then tested again ourselves that all these other businesses and entities were doing. So this is the process that came from all of these other companies, entertainers, athletes, etc., from Facebook, from Google, if you don't want to trust me because we just met, perfectly fine. But you should probably trust what all of these companies are doing that's the same. Because if they're all doing it, then there's got to be something to that. So let's dive into it. So first off, we found that most but not all of them had used some sort of shock marketing in order to scale in order to grab people. They'd use some sort of shock marketing. Shock marketing, guys. Shock marketing. Try it. Now, a great example of that would be the artist Banksy. You've probably heard of him. If you haven't, he's a street artist. He does graffiti, and his pieces go for millions of dollars at auction now. He is the most famous artist I think, honestly, without any argument, in the world right now. Some people might argue that, but I really don't know the counter-argument for who is more famous than him. Now, what you probably don't know is that one of Banksy's first things that put him on the map was taking his art and smuggling it into, into art galleries and hanging it on the walls of major art galleries like Tate Britain. He did this in, I believe, seven art galleries. Conor McGregor, well known for insane antics, also one of the biggest sports figures in the entire world right now. Now you'll see this over and over and over again. You see Dollar Shave Club and their hilarious but also quite shocking first video and advertisement that put them on the map. A lot of times if you want to go from nothing to taking over, shock is a great way to get people engaged and to stand out. Now, I'm not going to tell you that all of these businesses did that, but most of them did. In fact, in some ways, some of them did it more subtly. Starbucks, for instance. We're going to change what is a gas station and McDonald's experience in America, coffee. We're going to take that. We're going to change it to try to make it an experience, to try to make it fancy, to make it expensive. The European way. We're going to replace this other thing with that? That was pretty shocking in the 90s. I know Starbucks started before then, but that's when they really went aggressively after this approach and when they really exploded. In its own way, in a subtler way, that was pretty shocking to the sensibilities and what people thought of at that point in time. Facebook was also pretty shocking. We're going to have all these kids get on and upload pictures and be friends with each other. And then there were all these news stories about kids are doing this and that on Facebook. It was very shocking, especially to the older generation. Well, who dominates Facebook now? People over roughly 40 years old. So shock helped them take over as well. Now, after shock, what is the process? So we will dive into depth in a video series on shock marketing. It's going to be fascinating. We're going to look into the stories of Banksy, of Lady Gaga, of Conor McGregor, of Dollar Shave Club, and a bunch of more examples. We're going to have a 10 video series for free that you can tune in and learn about shock marketing, which is one of the best ways to go from nothing to huge. 
And again, companies like Dollar Shave Club, they didn't really make anybody angry, but they still used a type of shock. So it can be safer shock or more dangerous shock. More dangerous shock would be like Lady Gaga or Conor McGregor. I say dangerous as in it's a little riskier. We're gonna talk about that and in each of those 10 videos, we're going to dive deep into a different company, entertainer, athlete, somebody who went from zero to being huge based on shock marketing. Because I think in our current age, there's so much distraction that shock marketing is one of the best ways to get people attention and to really burst onto the scene. So after shock, which is very useful, especially if you're starting from scratch, but not necessary, what is the process? Well, the necessary process, that all those businesses, entertainers, athletes, all of them do is they then form a relationship with the customer. Why do they do that? Because imagine this, imagine that somebody came up to you on the street and they literally, literally in actuality had the best product that you could possibly buy in your life. Just imagine this hypothetically, they had it, but they did it on the street like this. Hey, 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 I've got this book. It will absolutely change your life. It is the best possible thing for you. It is the best thing for you. Let me tell you why. It's got this really cool section about doing this thing that all the businesses do, and you're gonna love it, and it's gonna be absolutely amazing, and it will change your life. Now, please buy it because it's going to change everything for you. If somebody did that to you, they could literally, literally have the best, most valuable thing for you on planet Earth, and you would not buy it. You would not buy it. Why? Because you wouldn't even get to the part where you found out whether it was that good or not. Without a relationship, in this day and age, we are shouted, I am a human. I live on this planet just like you do. We are shouted at about so many things that you're not going to buy anything that way or become a fan or invest in something or whatever it is that you're trying to do and scale. It's not going to work that way. So, Facebook, Starbucks, Conor McGregor, Michael Jordan, The Beatles, all of them, Walmart, Coca-Cola, whoever you want to talk about, they all formed relationships with customers, but they formed scalable relationships with them. That means if there has to be a one-on-one -on -one interaction before the relationship is formed, it's not going to be scalable. If there has to be a one-on-one -on -one phone call, if there has to be a one-on-one -on -one meeting, you cannot scale whatever that is. There's going to be a cap. You're only going to be able to get so many relationships and so many sales. And that was the central problem to my original seven figure business, which is awesome, that kept it from being able to grow anymore. Somebody had to be on the phone every single time before there was a relationship formed and before there was a customer. That doesn't scale. Now, there's also a process how all of these companies, all of these entertainers, all of these athletes, there's a process to how they do that. And it is a human process. And there's a way to do it with scalable tools. Now, I don't want to spend too much of your time just yet because this right here that I'm holding is actually the free beginning of the book. This is the free beginning of the book. You can start reading along with the 10 video series on shock marketing. So, all you have to do is just sign up and give us an email and we will send you the 10 video series where we dive into how all of these different businesses, entertainers, and athletes individually used shock marketing to go from nothing to exploding on whatever scene that they had. And you can get the free first 10 chapters of the actual book itself. And I'll tell you why we do that in just a second. But there's a process to how you do this and then there's ways to do it with tools that are scalable. First, you need attention. Real quick, attention is generally gotten by something that seems dangerous or an opportunity. Dangerous things can be surprising things. Hey guys, pay attention. It can be a snake, a spider, all kinds of things. Opportunity could be a pile of cash. Next up is engagement. Once you have attention, you have to keep engagement. How do you keep engagement? By change, change, change 
change and creating emotions. They talk about something that's kind of crazy, like Lady Gaga and her meat suit. You could talk about something that's really fascinating, like how Banksy exploded and became the world's biggest artist despite painting graffiti on walls. You could be funny, create emotion, and involve change, and you can keep engagement. Now, I want to say two things. First off, this video right here, over 65% of people watch the first 20 seconds of it. That might not seem remarkable to you until I tell you that on average, for a video like this, the average is 6%, less than 10 times, less than one tenth as much. We get over 10 times as much attention on this video as anybody else. If you had 10 times more attention than your competitors or the alternatives to you, do you think you would win? Then, let me tell you, we have half hour long videos that 9% of people watch the entire half hour. Remember I said the average is 6% watching the first 20 seconds. We have half hour videos where 9% of people watch the entire half hour. We do that by grabbing attention and keeping engagement, just like I just said. We will go into that a lot more here. I don't wanna waste your time right now. Finally, to form a relationship, you must spend time with the customer or fan or whatever it is. Time, preferably over repeat exposure. Again, do you need to trust me for this? No. The last time you made a friend, you probably met them at a barbecue or an event or something like that. You talked to them for a little while. Then you either ran into them again at another event or because of a friend or because you exchanged numbers and you hung out again. Time and repeat exposure and eventually they became your friend. Eventually. Over time and often repeat exposure. So you might show a video and then you might get an email and you might do this. You might have somebody come to an event. Those are repeat exposures and each time you're spending more time together. That creates a relationship. Once you've got a relationship, now that person would be willing to become a fan or buy or whatever the case may be. So in a lot of cases shock, in every case, forming a relationship by that process. Finally, making an irresistible offer. Now, what is making an irresistible offer? Okay, I love this. This started with Russell Brunson, but let me show you this. This is my telephone right here. This is my personal phone. You can see it's cracked there because I was doing a very similar demonstration just a couple days ago. Cracked it, haven't gotten the new phone yet. How many of you would pay me $1,000 for this, my phone? Used, cracked, everything. Probably none of you because you could get a brand new one for a lot less than that. Not a very good offer. However, let's take this same phone, the same phone, and make it an irresistible offer. So, on this phone, you could go into my Facebook Messenger, where I am personal friends, remember, with Kevin Sistrom, the founder of Instagram. And you could start talking to him. You'd be like, hey, I've got Dak's phone. Um, real quick, I wanted to ask you this question. Depending on how you phrase it, you could be speaking with Kevin Sistrom, the founder of Instagram. Some of you probably know exactly what you would want to do with Kevin Sistrom, the founder of Instagram. You probably have some idea that if you could just talk to him for a second, would make you a lot of money, or it'd make you very big and have a lot of fans, whatever it is that you're after. Now also on this phone, you can go into my Instagram. I used to ski race very seriously, almost Olympic level. You go into my Instagram, and you can stop to start talking to Michaela Schifrin, who used to ski race with me. In case you're not familiar, she's like a two or three time Olympic gold medalist. She's got over a million followers on Instagram, and they love her. She's got a lot of brand deals. You could also talk to Lindsey Vaughn's brother, if you're not familiar, Lindsey Vaughn dated Tiger Woods. She's also a multiple time Olympic gold medalist and one of the most famous female athletes out of the last like 20 years. Because I ski raced personally with her and with her brother. So you could talk to her brother. You'd be like, hey, um, I had this thing to run by Lindsey, you know, um, blah, blah, blah. And if you liked it, he could give you to her brother. Her brother also knows me. So depending on, or she also knows me. So depending on you spin that, you could be talking to Lindsey Vaughn. You could also talk to Jake Fuentes, who founded Level Money, like I mentioned earlier. Rainer Castillo, who founded Chubby Shorts. They know almost everybody in Silicon Valley. Tommy Leap, who also knows just about everybody in Silicon Valley. 
several venture capitalists. There's probably probably at least four venture capitalists in here, multiple people who run angel investor networks. You would have access to all of my customers, all of my notes. I keep all of my notes in my note file right here. Right here, Every, everything that you wanna learn, everything that got me all of my money and all of my success is right here. All of my customers are in my email. Now, that took me, remember, just over a half million dollars just for the, in ad testing alone, just for the notes in here. Plus that's like 20 plus years of life experience meeting people and doing all this stuff. Now who among you would pay a thousand dollars for this very cracked phone? I bet there's certain people watching who would pay $25,000 because one of the names I just mentioned, you know exactly what you would do with them. Or my customers, you know exactly what you would do with them. That's an irresistible offer. The same thing, cracked iPhone, two different ways of putting it. I made it into an irresistible offer. So you use shock marketing in most cases, if possible, to jump onto the scene and be like, I know you would rather listen to or buy from or whatever this established competitor, but I'm going to be really engaging and use shock marketing, use the way that the human brain works to jump into your attention and awareness. Then I'm going to form a relationship with you, grab your attention, keep your engagement, spend time with you, ideally over multiple interactions. Now, once we kind of know each other, you're going to trust me. You're going to know more what I'm about. You're going to feel a little bit like we're friends, but we're going to do that with scalable tools that I'm going to make an irresistible offer. Come to my concert, buy my product, sign up for my fitness training, use my app, whatever the case may be. And then you're going to make that an irresistible offer. You're not going to just say do it. You're going to make it an irresistible offer. Finally, when you do all of that, to quote Jordan Belfort, and if you haven't read his book or done his straight line persuasion system, if you have any interest in sales, I highly recommend that as well. To quote Jordan Belfort, you want them to be a 10 in thinking that you have the absolute best product in the world. That's why you make irresistible offers and why you show them exactly how it's going to change your life or entertain the crap out of you or whatever the case may be. Then you're going to want them to be a 10 out of 10 in liking and trusting you and a 10 out of 10 in trusting whatever company you might have or whatever entity, whatever organization at the same time, then you're gonna make them that irresistible offer and then everybody knows just some sort of call to action. That's the process. Now, the whole entire point of the art of rallying the crowd is to teach you that process. Now remember, if you give an email, we will send you the 10 video series where we dive into depth on shock marketing, which is the most disproportionate advantage you could possibly have if you do it well. We're gonna start out with, like I said, like how Banksy got famous, which is a really fascinating story. And we're gonna go each episode into different uses of shock marketing, which are higher risk and lower risk, and make sure that you understand the concept and can be creative and use that to burst onto whatever scene you're in. And the first 10 chapters of the book right here so look this is not like some pamphlet we're going to go into the exact process we just talked about in a lot more depth and that's just the free part and then you can dive into the book and learn about how you use scalable tools to do all of these things and all the ins and outs of scaling your business your music career your investing whatever that might be that is exactly what we're going to do. Now, you have to think. If you could successfully shock market on the level of like Banksy or Dollar Shave Club and get that kind of attention, that kind of buzz, and then you could take that attention and buzz, you knew exactly how to grab it and keep that attention, you could turn it into engagement, and you could spend a long amount of time with your customers, your prospective fans. You could get them to watch a half hour video and then you could get them to sign up for your webinar, or show up to an event, or whatever the case may be. You could get them on a Zoom call, or in a group, and then have repeat exposures where a lot of time is spent, and they get to know you, or your company, or your brand. And while you're doing that, you can create trust, you can be likable, you can be funny. You can do all of that. Think about this. If you could do that with 10,000 people, 
do you think that your business or your career or whatever you're trying to do would change? What would that be like? If you could do that with 100,000 people, what would that be like? If your shock marketing was good enough and you could get on the news and be rebroadcast by the news for free, what would that do to your company or your career or whatever it is that you're trying to do? Would that change things for you? What would that feel like? How many customers or fans or investors or whatever would you be able to collect out of that? What's that going to do for you? Just that process. Remember, this is the process that everybody from Facebook to the Beatles to whoever has used to do the same thing you're trying to do, which is scale their crowd. Right? Does that sound like it would have value to you? Now, I know you don't know me, but what if I had taken you through that process a few times before? Helped you do a shock marketing campaign and then helped you be like, no, change this, get attention exactly that way. This is how you're gonna create emotions. This is how you're gonna use change. This is exactly how you did that. You did that and you got emotions, you got the engagement, you spent time, you got customers. Let's say we'd done that two or three times before. Would you be fascinated to learn the exact process that I had used to help you do that in the past that had worked for you? Would you be fascinated to learn that process for yourself? Because that's the thing. I actually have a startup company. We have an e-commerce platform. And as a result, I do not want to be a consultant. It's not what I'm interested in doing. I want to make sure that other people do not get stuck like I did. Because when you're waking up and spending all day, every day, for three years to do something like that, guys, the amount of pain and hopelessness, and I even started to think that I was useless. After everything that I'd done, after having run over a seven-figure business, after having gone to Stanford University, after having been a near Olympic level athlete, it's that much time, that much failure. After having read everything and talked to all these great people, it really started to make me personally feel like I was useless, like I was a failure, like I couldn't do it. And I really, 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 before I die, would like to share that process with other people so that somebody who is motivated and creative and willing to do that can do it for themselves. That is incredibly powerful and meaningful to me to be able to share that, to share that with you. Something that powerful that changed my life so much that got me to succeed in all of my dreams. I want to be able to share that and pass that on and have some sort of legacy, some sort of impact while doing that so that other people don't go through what I went through. That's what's important to me. That's why I did all of this. Now, there's another side of this that we haven't talked about yet. So what I just described is the process to getting your initial customers. So after you do that, then you're going to get what we call irrefutable evidence, preferably irrefutable visual evidence of whatever it is that you're doing that is succeeding and you're gonna start giving that back to your customers. So a lot of times people do testimonials, but a testimonial, somebody talking on camera, it's not really irrefutable. Ideally, you want to show your actual success. Like weight trainers show before and after pictures of their trainees, the people that they help lose that weight. That's still not quite irrefutable. What if you documented that process and made a little documentary out of it that you could clip together into like five minutes showing them throughout the process and then make it create attention have change so that people wa- uh, create emotion sorry have change so that people watch it have a way to get it in, uh, attention like we talked about what if you could do that it could be showing some event that you had and all the people that showed up to it things like that show irrefutable visual evidence ideally or some sort of irrefutable evidence that whatever you're doing has worked and then you can start spiraling the crowd that way so you go through that whole process and then you say by the way here's what i've done before so in this instance the irrefutable evidence is you can go and for free read the first 10 chapters of the book and get the 10 video series going into shock marketing so that's irrefutable evidence because you can just start it for free 
and see if it's helpful for you, if it's valuable for you, if it's interesting to you. But in your business, what is that irrefutable evidence that you can loop back from your previous successes or let the customer try or the fan or whatever it may be so that you can loop this? Because when you start feeding that back on itself and doing everything else we talked about in a scalable manner, that's when everything really starts to take off. So how does this actually work? Again, you leave an email and then we're going to send you A, the first 10 chapters of the book, which is what I'm holding here right now. This is just the beginning, the free section, not the whole book. This is just the free section. And you can see, look, these are incredibly long, dense pages, irrefutable evidence that there's a lot of information. This is not some brochure. And the free 10 video series on shock marketing where we'll go into depth. Obviously, I like to talk a lot, you can tell. We're gonna go into depth in these different examples of shock marketing and how that is the biggest disproportional advantage you can have right now at doing anything. And there are easier ways to do it where it's not that risky and then there's more risky ways, whatever's right for you, your brand, your business, whatever you're doing. So we're gonna go into those and that's gonna be how this works. But you have to leave an email or we can't send you all of that. There's not a other way for us to get you all of that. I know I don't like giving emails either. That's how we get it to you and then you gotta check your email. And it's funny because like, a huge number of people actually click through from our videos and then like half of them never leave an email. It's like I said right now that you're going to click through and you're going to leave an email and then you're going to get that stuff. I told you how it works. Completely transparent. And then like half of people click through and they don't leave an email anyway. I know the exact psychology behind that, but it's kind of funny. So half of you are going to do that, but half of you are going to leave an email and we're going to give you that. And then you're going to irrefutably see the value for this for yourself and be able to imagine whether or not that's going to help you and if you want to continue to learn all the ins and outs of that process so that you can do it for whatever you're doing because the bottom line is I do not want any of you to feel the hopelessness and the heartbreak and just the plain hell that I went through thinking I was some sort of moron or I there was some sort of thing that I just didn't get or the world just didn't want me to succeed or whatever the case may be I don't want you to go there so I want you to know exactly what to do and then it's just up to you whether you do it and you put creativity and hard work into it or whether you don't. But I want to give you that key. I want to hand you that key so that you can do it yourself if you choose to. That's what I want to leave to this world. Anybody that has a dream like my dreams that has meant so much to them, whether it's freedom or riches or reaching a lot of people or changing a part of the world, I want to give them the key to rallying a crowd, which is the key to doing all of those things, by the way. If you can't rally a crowd, you can't do those things. I want to give you the key to that so that you can do with it whatever you want. And by the way, guys, right now, a lot of people are very bored. This is the absolute best time to do this. This is not the time to wait. This is the best time to get attention and engagement and grow all this stuff because people are pretty bored right now. So I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for taking the time. And I hope that this changes your life as much as it changes mine.